Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Prince Automation Destination, this side Prince. I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic that is OAuth 2.0. But before discussing about today's topic, I would like to highlight what we covered in the last lecture. So in the last lecture, we covered different authentication techniques such as basic authentication, API keys and JWT. In case you are not already aware on these authentication techniques, I would request you to please check out my previous video, which I'll be sharing in I icon. And today, let us discuss about OAuth 2.0. So what is OAuth? OAuth stands for Open Authorization, and this is open standard to authorize third-party applications to access user data. So let us try to understand what is OAuth 2.0. So OAuth 2.0 is an authorization framework, or sometimes we call it like authorization protocol. It allows third-party applications to obtain limited access to the user's resources on a web server. Suppose there is a third-party application which want to access user's resources, right? So how it can uh, like obtain the access? It can obtain the access with the help of OR 2.0. So how it works? So as soon as the third-party application tries to access the user resources, it will be redirected to the authorization server where user need to enter the credentials. And as soon as the credentials are entered and user has clicked on permissions, meaning grant permissions. The authorization server will be issuing one access token and that access token can be used by third party application to access the protected resources. Right. So this is how the entire flow works like. If you are unable to understand this, don't worry about it. We will try to understand by a diagram and then we will try to understand by the practical demonstration. Right. Now, when we work in or 2.0, we deal with four type of roles, right? So this is one of the interview question as well. Like what are the different roles that we deal with while working in or 2.0? So there are four roles, resource owner, client, authorization server, and resource server. So who is resource owner, user or a system that owns the protected resources and can't and can grant access to resources. So now this third party application is trying to uh, get the access of user resources right so the user is nothing but this resource owner and this resource owner only can grant access to the third party application by entering the credential onto the authorization server okay so this is who is resource owner now what is client client is an application or third party application that want to access the protected resources of resource owner so in order to participate in this or 2.0 the client should be registered with authorization server so that authorization server can identify the client. We will soon discuss about why we need this, right? So this is first prerequisite. Second thing is now the client should have access token to access the protected resources. So how it will obtain this access token? So for that purpose, let us discuss authorization server. So as we discussed that as soon as the client tries to access the resource right at that point of time it will be redirected to the authorization server right to get the access token so once server verifies the authenticity of user and consent is given by the resource owner it issues access token as well as refresh token so we will soon try to understand what is access token and what is refresh token right so now we got the token we can use this particular token to access the resources so where the resources will be available the resources will be available on resource server so server that have protected resources of resource owner so using this access token that we have received from authorization server now we can access the protected resources right now let us discuss about scopes so it is mechanism used in or 2.0 flow to limit an application's access to the resource owner's resources right so as we discussed that we will be giving the limited access to the third party application. So third party application might not need the entire control. So we will be giving the limited access, whatever it needs. So it may need first name, last name, email ID, right? Or some other information. It may not need all the information. So how is it possible? It is possible with the help of scopes. So whenever the client will be making a request to the authorization server, it will be sending the scope that it need read access to this particular module, right? So this is how we can control the limited access with the help of scopes, right? Now, the next thing is tokens and authorization code. So as we discussed, that authorization server will be issuing the access token, but this is not always that true. Authorization server 
can issue access token as well as authorization code it depends on the grant type so we will soon try to understand what is grant type right so let us read this statement o 2.0 server might not directly return an access token as soon as resource owner authorizes access instead authorization code may also be returned right now we got this authorization code we can use this authorization to got to get the access token and now we can utilize this access token to access the protected resources so when access token is issued at that point of time refresh token will also be issued we will soon discuss about the concept of access token and refresh token right so far we are clear now now let us try to understand how oauth 2.0 works so as we discussed that client need to be registered so we discussed here that application that want access to protected resources is known as client and it must be registered with the authorization server so this is what we are trying to understand now why it need to be registered right so this is the prerequisite in order to use oauth client must have its own credentials so how it can receive its own credentials it can receive its own credentials that is client id and client secret from authorization server so how it can achieve it can receive by registering against the OAuth server so it will be going to OAuth server there it will be registering this particular application and as a result this authorization server will be issuing client id and client secret so first step is done now we are going to make a request to the authorization server from the client right that is third party application right so what will be passing will be passing client id which we got from the authorization server will be passing client secret will be passing scope meaning which type of access we need and will be passing one parameter that is redirected uri redirected uri is after grant or denial where we will fall back right so when we'll be discussing about the practical demonstration at that point of time you will understand this so after that what will happen is if uh, the authorization server is able to identify client and by client id and client secret and everything looks good so it will be showing one screen where resource owner need to enter the credentials after that resource owner need to grant the permissions so once permissions are granted authorization server redirect back to the client so as we discussed so where it will be redirecting it will be redirecting to this particular redirected uri whatever is mentioned in this particular uri so this authorization server will be redirecting back to the client on that particular screen whatever the uri is provided here right and it will be returning authorization code or access token depending on grant type and refresh token will also be issued right so it all depends which type of grant type we are using so we will soon understand what is grant type right if authorization code is issued then we will hit token endpoint with this particular authorization code to get the access token now access token is issued we can use this access token to access the protected resources so how this is how the oauth 2.0 works in a generic way right now these are the grant types right so what is grant type it defines the way application interacts with the authorization server to get the access token which is further used to access the protected resources so as we understood that in order for third party application to access the protected resources it should have access token so grant type is a way how we can get that access token from the authorization server so there are different type of grant type depending on the a need we can use that grant type but the most widely used is authorization code so in this case what happens is authorization code is issued from the authorization server then we'll be hitting the access token endpoint to get the access token with the help of this authorization code that got issued from the authorization server in case of implicit grant type no intermediate authorization code is issued in this case direct access token is issued and that access token can be used to access the protected resources so this was previously widely used but not used nowadays then we have a concept of resource owner so this type of grant type is used when the client is most trusted so for example we are using our own mobile right so that is most trusted so in that case we can use resource owners credentials to obtain the access token so in this type of grant type we'll be entering the credentials of resource resource owner and we'll be getting the access token from the authorization server right then client credentials so whenever the client want to access its own resources so at that point of time we can use client credentials grant type as well 
so we can use another type of grant type that is refresh token grant type so we'll soon discuss about when we'll be using refresh token grant type right so these are the different grant types that we deal with so this is also one of the interview question that what are the different grant types that o 2.0 have right now o 2.0 flow for authorization code grant so this is same as this one but it is tailored for the authorization code grant right so in this case again the client must must be registered against the server so that client id and client secret is available with the client and it will be making a request and then the user consent will be given and authorization server now will be redirecting back to the client with authorization code in this case it won't be issuing the access token it will be issuing only authorization code now we can exchange the token with authorization code meaning we'll be passing the authorization code to hit the token endpoint to get the access token with the help of authorization code and refresh token may also be returned right now we have access token so with the help of access token we can access the protected resources right so this is high level flow right so first of all client should be registered against the authorization server so it will be making an authorization request then user consent will be given and as a result authorization grant will be issued now with the help of authorization grant we can get the token and token will be issued now with the help of token we can access the resources right and this is another diagram from here also we can understand so client is a third party application this is the authorization server which is our server so client will be registering first as a result client id will be issued now client will be making a request to authorization server in between it will see resource owner right and resource owner will be granting the authorization as soon as it is uh, granting the permission authorization code will be issued and with respect to authorization code we can make a call to endpoint token endpoint and we can get the access token now with the help of access token we can access the resources on the resource server right so this is how it works right now let us discuss about some of the interview questions right so the first interview question is what is access token and what is refresh token or before that how many types of token the OAuth server issues so OAuth server issues generally two type of tokens first is access token another is refresh token so let us try to understand what is access token and what is refresh token access token is a short lived short lived meaning it is having less life maybe 15 minutes expiration time or 30 minutes expiration expiration time right so the purpose of access token is to access the protected resources so if we have access token we can access the protected resources of user right so this is the overall purpose of access token but it has limited time and it will expire after that time now what is the purpose of refresh token so along with access token refresh token is also issued but it all depends how the implementation is done in some cases refresh token might not be issued and in most of the cases it will be issued actually so refresh token is having life more than access token and the purpose of refresh token is to get the new access token if the old one is expired because access token has limited time so it will be expired after certain duration so how we will get the new access token so we can get the new access token with the help of ref refresh token so when we'll be making a call to the token endpoint with the refresh token at that point of time we will get the access token and the grant type we will be passing is refresh token grant type in this case so this is how access token and refresh token differs right now what is the format of tokens right so this is another question right so we got two type of tokens but what is their format so one format is jwt which is widely used so o 2.0 along with jwt is the industry standard and is widely used right in case you want to understand more on what is jwt i have already covered in the last lecture i would request you to please check out my previous video to understand more on more on what is jwt but jwt stands for json web token then we can use opaque as well so meaning or to uh, server can use opaque format as well so opaque is some random string which does not have any meaning for the client but server will interpret to understand this right now there is another question right what is the difference between oauth 1.0 and oauth 2.0 before that let us try to understand what is oauth 1.0 so oauth uh, stands for open authorization and prior to 2.0 version there was another version that was 1.0 right so what is OAuth 1.0? OAuth 1.0 is more complex because when we are sending a request in OAuth 1.0 flow, with each request, 
will have to sign it with some cryptographic signature right which makes it more complex because it is a overhead right while or 2.0 we issues a access token that will work like a bearer token and we can pass it in each request which make it less complex auth 1.0 is more secure because it's use it uses its own cryptographic signature right while auth 2.0 relies on https talking about the token so tokens are tied specific to client and resource owner so that particular specific client and resource can resource owner can utilize it while in case of auth 2.0 tokens are bearer and whoever have these tokens they can access the resources right so auth 1.0 is having only one flow as a result it cannot be used for many applications while auth 2.0 has multiple flows because of multiple grant types and it can be utilized for multiple applications such as mobile application web application and many other applications right auth 1.0 is not widely used nowadays while auth 2.0 is widely adopted by major companies like google facebook etc so this is what i wanted to cover guys as part of current lecture in the next lecture we will try to understand auth 2.0 flow with the help of some practical demonstration in postman so thank you once again guys and I would request you to please like, share and subscribe. Thank you once again.